So, okay, uh, one of the topics that Taylor brings up in this book is anthropocentrism. Mm -hmm. uh, and he kind of locates one of the problems with finding <coughs> meaning uh, is after you've reduced, he says, what, after you've reduced everything to man, it, you've abolished these horizons of significance because we eliminate everything outside of man which could, which could contribute to meaning. And you're just kind of left, you're left standing in this, for example, it would be like, almost like this picture that the existentialists might have painted. Like you're standing in this absurd, meaningless, empty world with no God staring at space that's never going to answer you back. All you hear is your own echo. And you're kind of left in this meaningless world and you kind of did this heroic vision on one end where you have to kind of go and create the meaning of your life. But on the other hand, because everything is meaningless, how could you possibly create any meaning? It's all meaningless. Uh, uh, you're standing in a dead void. How could anything you do be meaningless? He kind of he Taylor locates part of the problem with with what he thinks is this is, is a kind of strange kind of anthropocentrism, uh, locating man as as this man and only man as what is what can give meaning. Uh, well, what do you, what do you think about this? Wow, this is gonna get very strange. Sorry. Okay, so maybe not not to criticize Taylor. Maybe this is maybe he and I are saying the same things. But what if it's maybe anthro anthropocentrism comes about? This is gonna sound strange because of an incorrect view of meaning. Or even an incorrect view of language, you may boil down to. But why why does this happen? It why this happens is this. So society progresses, and then there's this kind of atheistic turn, and then people stop believing in God. But what happens is like they have this mindset where, right? What is the meaning of this pen? God gave it meaning, right? And then when God disappears, the thing that gave it meaning is gone. So now the pen is meaningless. Um, then you're left with, well, well, if this thing, this God thing is gone, well, then it's just me. Uh, it's all this left is for me to give it meaning. Um, but how can I, how can I do that? Uh, there's, it's, it'd be like, it's seen it's some of these people who, who you meet who say like, you know, but you're just, you know, you're just making up. It's just your desires, right? Well, you you like the pen just like you like pizza, right? It's it's all meaningless. How could it be meaningful? Like in in a hundred years, you'll be dead, right? What what does that mean? You you like the pen? What does that mean? You like this piece of art? You like this stupid Yeti blue microphone you have sitting here? It's just meaningless. <laughs> You're gonna die. Everything's gonna die. Um. So, but what if the problem is this view of meaning? What, what if the problem is that the idea that meaning comes from outside of something, outside of a system, into it, like God. God kind of showers us with meaning. <laughs> what, what if this is the problem? And the, 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 the solution is to restructure our view of meaning, which is meaning comes from internal to a, something internal to a system. So this is an example Robert Solomon used in one of his books. He said, he said like, it would be like something like asking... Um, what is the meaning of the English language? Well, that's a silly question. The English language doesn't have a meaning. Individual words inside of the English language have meanings, right? It's internal to the system of the English language for there to be meanings. But like this view of God is on the outside. It would be like saying God is like the English language and it's kind of showering you down with meanings. But no. Um, and what happens is so all these people have this idea that meaning comes from outside, and then God disappears. But they still keep this idea, this idea that meaning must come from outside of the system. And you can't find anything anymore, so there's no meaning. It's gone. Uh, so then it kind of falls down, and people just say, oh, it's man. Then I guess all that we have left is man. But if it's just me... I mean, how can I give, me personally, how can I give meaning to something? I just like it. Um, so then it kind of boils down to this meaninglessness that Taylor talks about. 
Um, but don't you think maybe rather than anthropocentrism, the original problem was this flawed theory of meaning, which is that meaning must come from the outside rather than from, for example, the real solution would be meaning comes from us together, working together in our use of, of words, in our use of the environment, in our participation in history, in, in our background, in our psychologies, and our coming together in maybe like Wittgenstein might say, in our use of the pen rather than me attributing meaning to the pen alone. It would be through the societal use of the pen, the language game in which pen is used, right? When you say pen, I go and grab it, right? This is the true locus of the meaning, internal to the system. So the problem was a flawed theory of meaning, not anthropocentrism. What do you think? Yeah, I mean, like, it can't... I mean, like, I'm sorry to say, like, man is the only thing that we know right now that gives meaning, so... I mean, th that part I was kind of kind of with you thinking it while, while I was reading. I mean, like, it might not be meaning can't come from the individual unit in society, but meanings do come from societal structures. I mean, if they didn't come from there, then we'd really be screwed, right? I mean, because you can't generate it alone, and if society can't do it, well, what do you got left? The trees and the rocks? They're not talking. Yeah. I, it kind of gets into grayer zones, though, when you think about, like, the fact, though, that... How should I say? You're right. Pe people, people can through use develop kind of meanings, but like I guess, right? I need something to act upon, right? Yeah. So the the trees can be meaningful. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, if it was just me in a void, then nothing would be meaningful. But you know, maybe because there's trees there which provide oxygen, which provide a, a better environment for me, uh, I am able to through having the trees there, they are able to have meaning in my world, right? Um, yeah. I, I, I don't want to knock Taylor's point about anthropocentrism. If he means, like, it, if he just boils down to just me somehow willing meaning onto things, like, I just remember Wittgenstein, right? He talked about, like, you know, how do you say boo, boo, boo and mean, you know, what do you say? It's cold or it's hot or whatever. What would you do? How would you mean that? How would one go about meaning that? Uh, maybe I kind of thought what he was getting at, though, was in the, bringing it back to the trees and the rocks, is that, like, I mean, like, the reason why all this doesn't work is because your sense of self is not only within you. You, you are not a complete self alone. You are combined with every other person you meet and all the experiences you've had. And maybe in, in a crazy way, society isn't isn't only just society, right? I mean, like, it's the country, it, the rocks, the trees. It's, yeah. it's I mean, mixed up with the environment and the history. The environment. Yeah, and, and, and exactly not even history. corporeal things. It, it, you know, I mean, ideas. I mean, it's mixed up with ideas, things that don't even exist. Exactly. I really liked when uh, Ortega talked about how, like, people were doing, you know, uncovering new histories and, like, how this very uncovering of new histories was able to change our view of the world today. So even history was coming back and affecting society and changing meanings in society, society today, things that happened thousands of years ago. Right, and I mean, like, in, to put it in his term, right, I mean, like, of course, the, the manner of meaning has to go through society, but the matter of that doesn't have to be only about human society. Yeah. In fact, it, it probably usually isn't. It, it's, it's a lot of times about very non-human things, like history, Right, especially mm -hmm. conflicts, battles, mountains, rivers, trees, rocks in Japan, you know, Mount Fuji or something, right? I mean, it's tied up with the Japanese identity. It's hard to call that human, right? But they, they would almost think of it as a kind of a character in Japan. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, yeah. Hmm. I guess, yeah. I did, is, is, is just the word anthropocentrism... I don't know. What what do you think is 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 it still legitimate to crit criticize it as kind of like human centeredness is the problem, or is it individual centeredness that's the problem? Maybe I, I again like I was trying to tie this in my other response. Maybe the idea is, is it's this idea that 
humans and only humans are the only thing that can matter, and then it does kind of shrink down to this egoism. Ah, uh, I see. What, but uh, it, but it, I see what you it mean. extends beyond. It can I extend see. beyond humans, right? So, it can be uh, non-human thing, artifacts, right? The only things that can matter are humans. Uh, I see what you mean. About the, that's what you meant about the matter. And the, okay, I totally get you there. I like. I, I think that's wow. That's a perfect way to put it. Yeah. Maybe I'm just guessing because I had the same point. I mean, because I mean, of course, when you get right down to it, without the society, I mean, it, it's just dead, right? There's nothing. There's no getting off the ground here. But again, that's the distinction between matter and manner. Yes. Yeah. 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 Oh, great! I like that very. I like that a lot. Um, so. <laughs> Yeah, I actually to to be honest, like even me myself, I kind of had an initial reaction, kind of like this. Well, you know, you know, if if this is gone, well, what's left to give meaning? Well, maybe it's just me alone. I have to give meaning to my life alone, right? And I think that's wrong. But I can I can kind of see why. It's got kind of like these really tough extremes that people go to. Everything is outside. Meaning comes from outside. Like even like tr in the Tractatus, right? The the value of the world lies outside of the world. And then like, then it, everything is inside. Everything's inside me, right? And nothing is outside me. Everything comes from right, right in here. Where where it's more like this coming together. Kind of, it's a little bit outside of me, but also it's a combination of going through me, the matter, a manner of going through me to generate meaning. But, I mean, there is something we have to sacrifice here, right? It's it's an eternal metaphysical sense of meaning, maybe? Yeah. I mean, it has to be more like a Hegelian kind of society structured meaning that, that, that changes through history, and that's the best we're going to do because there's nothing else. Yeah. I mean... Do you think, like, I, this is something that I was thinking about. Do you think, like, for example, do you think maybe Plato would have thought, like, this is the good. This The good is this public order outside mm -hmm. that, you know what I mean? Like, it's, I can gain a vision of the good, but, how should I say, M my vision of the good is not the good. My The, the good lies somewhere out here and I can maybe garner garner a glimpse at it. I can look at it fleetingly like the sun. Uh, but it, it's still out there and our job is to articulate as best as we can that that up there. Um, so m maybe even there's there's a chance to leave in like a, a kind of kind of metaphysical system. Maybe? Like a like a like a platonic good, do you think? Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't know. Is it you know, for, is this is it possible anymore to have a single dominant sense of what is good? I mean, don't you think? But I I, I don't know. I really don't buy it so much because maybe I think Plato would somehow. I don't know. Maybe would Plato say like you have to in a sense? This is kind of what I wrote. You, you kind of have to find a view from nowhere for Plato. In other words, I kind of have to. Articulate a vision that's not of me, right? It's not through me. It's it's of the good, which is something kind of something alien up there in the sky that that you can somehow work to through math, right? Yeah. Which I don't know. That's probably just not believable anymore. Yeah. Um, also, kind of reminded me of Kant a little bit too. Interesting question, though. Mm. All right. Uh, all right. I think that's pretty good. All right.